It's been rough going for RFK. The independent presidential hopeful had an uncomfortable interview with comedian Dave Smith on his podcast as he was seemingly unable to answer if he had concerns over Israeli influence in American politics. Let's take a look. Do you, sir, do you have, I, I don't agree with that, but okay. Do you have concerns about um, the the level of Israeli influence in our, our politics here in the United States of America? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm not, you know, I'm not a politician in political office, so I don't see much of that. So you don't I, think like, so, so in after 9-11. Uh, you know, I mean, listen, I think, uh, listen, I think everybody has, um, you know, that, that, that there's so many malevolent influences on Capitol Hill. And they include many nations and they include many, you know, corporate entities. Oh, and I don't. Later on in the interview, RFK struggled to justify the difference on his foreign policy surrounding Ukraine and Israel, respectively. Let's watch that. In such a critic and such an effective critic. You've been you've been such an effective critic of the neoconservatives. I, I am and a I, critic of the neoconservatives. Yes, I know. That's what I just said. But you know that the, these two issues are so like intertwined, and I know you know that because I know you know this stuff. But look, uh, well, the, the report. I mean, David, again, uh, I was for I, you know, I I would vote for World War II, right? I would not vote for any other war. The neocons vote for every war. But I, you're voting for I this led war. The opposition to the Afghan war, to the Iraq war. To Panama. Oh, okay, to fine. But Vietnam. listen, I was okay, fine. But this is all I'm saying. Vietnam. So I, you know, all okay. these wars. Look. But I'm just saying I don't want to live in a world where it, I think it would be bad for our country. It would be bad for the world. Meanwhile, President Biden's patience with Israeli leader Bibi Netanyahu seems to be running out, as some reports indicate that Biden is becoming frustrated with the Israeli head of state as the conflict in Gaza is beginning to bleed him, young voters and Arab voters alike. Twitter community notes pointed out that Deputy White House Press Secretary Andrew Bates denied the accusations and added that, quote, Biden and Netanyahu have a decades-long relationship that is respectful in public and in private. Meanwhile, third-party candidate Cornell West was far more candid about Biden's connection, with, about how Biden's connection with Israel made him a, quote, war criminal. West added that Israel and the United States were, quote, intertwined in genocide as a result of their actions in Gaza. Biden has been taking a walloping from the left over his Israel policy. Politico reported an unnamed House Democrat as saying, quote, the base is really ticked off and it's not just the leftists. I have never seen such a depth of anguish as I've seen over this Gaza issue. Bibi is toxic among, among many Democratic voters, and Biden must distance himself from him yesterday. Yeah, that seems to be self-evidently true. We've been talking about polls showing the overwhelming majority of Democratic voters support a ceasefire. The, over, the majority of all voters also support a ceasefire. And yet you see these two presidential candidates, Joe Biden on one hand and RFK Jr. on the other hand, seeming completely unwilling to distance themselves from Bi uh, Netanyahu's policies, no matter how much it hurts them electorally. With Biden, you're seeing a fleet of articles come out saying there's discord behind the scenes. He's trying to pressure him behind the scenes. But some critics of that say, well, this is just a media effort to give him cover for what is ultimately a continued support of him in every way that matters. Bombs, the bombs that are being dropped are bombs that are coming from America. The funding is coming from America. Netanyahu could not continue this um, uh, siege without America's both real financial, military, and diplomatic support. So what this is the effect of what's going on in the media, these articles saying, well, Biden is secretly upset, is to give a kind of a pretext for those who are concerned with these behaviors and say, well, Biden is doing the best he can do. Biden's doing the best he can do, even though he evidently, self-evidently is not. And on the other hand, RFK Jr. is such a confusing entity because so much of his value in the political discourse right now is being someone who's been willing to go against establishment norms when it comes to whether it's COVID or vaccines or um, uh, the Ukraine war. But this instance is one where he's very clearly unwilling to 
depart from the establishment in any way, even when asked a series of, I think, really fair and pointed questions um, by Dave Smith here. Yeah. And you got that seven-second pause that was heard all around the internet this weekend. People couldn't believe it, as you seem to be sitting there considering this issue for perhaps the first time. So I know Dave Smith decently well. He's a comedian and a, a libertarian commenter. He's actually been a very involved in the Libertarian Party. Um, him and his, he helped organize his supporters, actually kind of took over the Libertarian Party since the uh, previous election. He has been mentioned as a possible Libertarian Party presidential mm -hmm. candidate, frankly, and there was some speculation that he would run. I think he has tamped down on that speculation and has no intention of running. But, uh, you know, we've talked a lot. There's been a lot of discussions about whether RFK Jr. could ultimately be the Libertarian Party candidate. That Those discussions were happening several months ago when uh, Angela McArdle, who we've interviewed on the show, the head of the Libertarian Party, um, seemed somewhat uh, very supportive of RFK Jr. Now, he has taken criticism from the Libertarian Party account itself on social media for his Israel stance. And there you see from Dave Smith, um, again, who is someone who is very much representative of where Libertarian Party thinking is these yeah. days, very uncomfortable with what RFK Jr. has to say about Israel. Yeah. And RFK, you know, was, was trying to differentiate himself from neocons, saying, well, they support every war other than World War II. I wouldn't have supported any of our wars. And RFK says, well, are you, are you, you're supporting funding this war. Again, I think it would be different and, and I think it would be acceptably libertarian to say that um, what that Israel needs was attacked by a terrorist group and needs to defeat Hamas and is going to take actions to do that. And maybe I uh, criticize or have a lot of problems with some of the actions they're taking, but they're going to do that, etc. But the duty of the American taxpayers to fund that is pretty, I, I think, pretty important to libertarians to say that we, and, and to many conservatives and to many, <laughs> many on the left as well, there's some commonality here that we, we do not want our dollars sent overseas for this purpose, and we object to it, and we object to our government doing it on our behalf. And, um, and so on this issue, he is, he is very out of step with, um, I think, all sorts of independent-minded people who would be otherwise willing to support right. him. And, and I take your point about the funding aspect of it, to be clear, but to be clear, so many people, not just on the left, but generally speaking, see this as an unjust war from on the behalf of Israel because of the continued and ongoing occupation. And when you hear Kennedy's explanation, when you listen to the full interview, or at least the extended, what, eight-minute clip that was going around on, 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 on Twitter, there is a, an ideological argument he's making for the legitimacy of a continued occupation in the kind of— um, intensity of the siege that has now claimed coming up on, or if it hasn't exceeded, 30,000 lives in Gaza. And he makes arguments that are facially, historically wrong um, about uh, 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 Palestinians, uh, the PLL, refusing to acknowledge uh, Israel as a state with a right to exist. Arafat acknowledged that back in 1967. There's a bit of a, a pivot that he makes that says, oh, well, acknowledge it as a, a Jewish state with a right to exist, which very much feels like a goalpost moving. When asked pointedly about whether or not he's considered this question of whether or not um, uh, APAC, uh, Israel lobbies, have too much influence in American politics, he says, well, I'm not a politician in elected office, so I'm not really privy to that, as though all of us in the media realm aren't covering stories about the influence uh, that Israel has. We just did a story today about CNN uh, journalists complaining that all of their stories are routed through Jerusalem or these uh, reviewers in Atlanta that skew the bias disproportionately toward um, Israel. The idea that someone who wants to be president of the United States of America, he hasn't even considered this issue, as someone who has you know, who ha is running for office and certainly, I'm sure, I don't know exactly where he's earned money from, um, but certainly is in a realm where APAC money flows in, in the course of these elections, seeing news stories about how they committed to $100 million to well, defeat right. pro-Palestine candidates. So, and, and this is the main point I want to make about this, his, his father's Justice Department was in the process of trying to order the American Zionist Council, the, like a proto-APAC group, to register as a foreign agent, which, by the way, APAC does not have to do in contrast to so many other foreign, every other foreign lobbyist group in America. So for him to say, I don't know, I just haven't considered that because I've never been in elected office really does feel like a cop out. Yeah, I mean, he could have just said, look, there, it is true there are a lot of different levels of influence going on in Washington. There are a lot of interest groups spending a lot of money to lobby po politicians for all sorts of causes. Um, related to foreign policy and foreign governments and also to domestic industries and so on and so forth. And it's kind of a bit gross across the board if he didn't want to specifically 
um, call out this one aspect of lobbying, that's fine by me. But he should say, you know, I, I'm what, what I would like to hear him say is I'm running for president in order to put the American people first, to be solely focused on their needs and what they want. And they have there there is a lot of dissatisfaction about the automatic level of support for not just Israel, for Ukraine and for everywhere else being prioritized. And for what? What is the strategic actual benefit for the U.S.? You say, you know, he says it's there. It's important for for us for there to be in Israel. Um, I, I'm not disputing that, but we are we're now having our troops being attacked all over the globe. Uh, we had three people die uh, because of, of uh, an yes. Iranian funded militia group. And p the American people are deeply dissatisfied. So let's rethink this. Yeah. And just to be clear, as of last week, the, the latest reporting was that our own uh, State Department spokespeople confirmed that they didn't have any actual evidence of the direct Iranian ties to it. Uh, to to the well, they have the no terrorists that they, they don't think Iran told this group to do this. It wasn't directed, right? Right. So it's Iranian funded in the way that everything Israel does, even the claims of genocide that it might be um, permanent, you know, more to conclusively charged with at the ICJ are American funded. Well, yeah, but everyone does say that. In fact, sure. So. Um, yeah. One other point I'd make about this is that as we covered on the show. He was invited by, um, uh, RFK Jr. was invited by Max Blumenthal of the Gray Zone, who I think is one of the most um, informed with an encyclopedic knowledge of the history of the region and, and some of the, I, I don't want to characterize them as talking points, but common refrains that uh, RFK Jr. and others make in this realm and, and wanted to debate him. And he's never not yet followed up on that. But it was willing to go on uh, Dave Smith's show, despite having a smaller audience, frankly, um, than uh, the Gray Zone has. And seeing the way that this interview went, I do think it is perhaps a demonstration of why there is a reluctance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like Max Blumenthal. But I really do think that those kind of conversations are very useful, very fruitful. And I think that uh, Dave Smith did a really good job here. More rising right after this.